Nama. Nama tu. Ini Louis Tapadu. Igdol mutual luar. Kisah itu awal nak jadu no yang luar ni ama. Yeah, Louis Louis Tapadu. I remember. I think Louis Macaulay uh, did mention th something about um, a book pick's first book that he put out. And A Book Pick also had a project called Project Surname, well, where all the Inuit in Nuna would have their own unique name, like a spiritual name or a given name, given to their uh, immediate families or given to them by another caring family so that they can, so that the disease can continue on through the namesake. During uh, Project Surname, a book pick came around to me since my stepfather's name was Alalak, Felix Alalak. He insisted that I should change my name to Alalak. And I said, why? That's stealing somebody else's name. You know, how, how can that be? You don't steal somebody else's soul. You don't steal somebody else's property, particularly the name. So he gave an hashtag with the father. Therefore, uh, whenever I uh, make, uh, introduce myself, I always say to Patrick, and thankfully it was not Alalak. That was my stepfather's name, not mine. Uh, during the course of my tenure as minister and involvement with other Inuit organization, I am always, uh, I always go back to the time when I was a youngster, when my grandfather, Itikuchuk, and other elders uh, uh, more or less bowed to the area administrators or the white people. They did what they wanted to do because uh, the assimilation is that what they were doing was good. And, um, over the years, I've uh, read some documents, I've read a lot of uh, papers, and I came across this uh, very, uh, I, I, I forgot the name of the author, but the book was Please Understand Me. I'm going to read a quote from that book. If I do not want what you want, please try not to tell me that my want is wrong. Or if I believe other than you, at least pause before you correct my view. Or if my emotion is less than yours or more, given the circumstance, same circumstances, try not to ask me to feel more strongly or weakly. Or yet, if I act or fail to act, in the, manner you are, in the manner of your design for action, let me be. I do not, for the moment at least, ask you to understand me. That will come only when you are willing to give up changing me into a copy of you. If you will allow me any of my own wants or emotions or beliefs or actions, then you open yourself so that someday these ways of mine might not seem so wrong and might finally appear to you as right for me. To, po to put up with me is the first step to understanding me. Not that you embrace my ways as right for you, but that you are no longer irritated or disappointed with me for my seeming waywardness. In understanding me, you might come to prize my differences from you and far from seeking to change me, pre preserve and even nurture those differences. Those are the very sentences that have me kept going and reminded me of my forefathers and the way they went through during the community development process. It is sad. It is for millennia, Inuit lived independently in the northern polar regions 
of the world, successfully creating a culture rich in spiritual belief and social life, and sustained by a sophisticated knowledge of our environment, we pass on our culture from generation to generation with methods perfectly attuned to our home, the northern wilderness, its wildlife, and elements, giving young people the skills to live in harmony with the land and one another. Inuit have been romanticized by people from beyond the polar regions for more than 400 years, since the first explorers visited us. At least those early visitors to our land appreciated the survival skills of our ancestors, for they depended on us for their own survival. They knew that environment was the book to us, which we could read with great skill. They heard our stories, myth, and legends, which held the meaning of our oneness and spiritual affinity with the natural world. They join us willingly on our hunt and learn from us. We've used, like I, I mentioned earlier, our communication mode is through oral history. And oral history or Inuit knowledge or Inuit know-how, as we like to define it as IQ, Inuakawimayatakangit, is reflected in our desire for self-government as well as commonly shared stance among Inuit that their knowledge can be defined. It aims primarily at convincing outsiders of the value of traditional knowledge, but rather at under underscoring the point that Inuit culture will be the underlying principle of governance in defining IQ as encompassing all aspects of traditional Inuit culture, the problematic evolve in formulating definition was circumvented by referring it to definition of what is traditional Inuit. It is said to exclude anything other than everything non-traditional tradition itself is problematic concept that it is always changing. So tradition and the translation of Inuakawi Yatokangi also becomes problematic. Inuakawi Maningit or Inuit knowledge may not necessarily be traditional. It may have something to do with the current uh, happenings, social problems, so forth. The knowledge to address the problems comes, stems from the Inuit societal value. In traditional Inuit life, people's response to antisocial behavior were flexible, primarily based on judgment of the person involved in the circumstances of the case. As in the Canadian system of social control, the basic aim was to maintain or restore order and peace. However, the method used to reach this purpose differed. The importance, the important principle of justice through punishment found within the Euro-Canadian legal system was never an aspect of inner social control. In response to antisocial behavior in at resocialization of the individual by pointing out the adverse consequences and their non-social behaviors on others and providing an example of proper behavior through display of showing cares to others. We found that in the present Canadian judicial system leaves too little room for reconciliation and that it takes months even years to resolve conflicts in court, usually at a great cost. During, during this time, the conflicting parties are forbidden to have any contact. The person who is facing charge 
is under great stress waiting for an outsider to resolve the conflict for them. It is a known fact that many cases facing charges have committed suicide. The Canadian system, these are my own words, the Canadian system has killed more of our young people through suicide than were ever murdered in every, any given period. When we come, when we talk about taking one's life, the consequences leading into that are very much um, preventable if in which also societal values are uh, used. Inuit way of handling conflict emphasizes reconciliation, knowing that people involved must remain in the community. However, serious offender must be incarcerated, and there's no uh, question about that. Often, in cases of domestic disputes, both parties share, share the blame, but according to the current code, criminal code, the person who gets physical is charged, even though the other party may have initiated the conflict. Often, the male is charged even though the conflict may have been initialized by the female partners, initiated by the female partner. In the Inuit way of handling disputes, both parties would be quizzed about the problem. When one party is able to admit fault, reconciliation begins immediately with no fines or punishment imposed. The involvement of social services and police in marital problems is a contributing to a growing number of divorces. Parental and elders was better than interference by social workers and other not. Thus, the importance of Inuit societal value comes into play. We know that some years back, we know that the government's policy of assimilation and also a survival of residential school in Sister Pilnery. When I heard the Prime Minister's apology some years ago, I was deeply touched. After so many years, the federal government did recognize that the residential school system was intended to oppress Aboriginal cultures with the end goal of assimilation. They acknowledged the shameful chapter in this country's history was wrong and asked for forgiveness. I, like many, I, like many Inuit and Nunavut, attended residential school, and of course my cousin uh, Monica, I took childhood. Uh, she also went to the same school as I did. So are, are others in the room? The scars for me. Well, I recognize the words along, well, not heal past injustice. I was truly inspired by the apologies and a lot of us did accept the apology given by the Prime Minister at that time. Recognition and acceptance are the keys to healing. Moving forward, as difficult as it may at times, is our next step. We know that Inuit are forward-looking, resilient, innovative, and resourceful. So it is with little surprise that we took our future into our own hands, our own hands with the creation of Nunavut. We now have a public government that is helping to shape our destiny. I acknowledge that my past in the residential school system is part of who I am today. I wouldn't be speaking to you in English if I didn't attend that residential school nor would have the foundation to do research, and nor would have I the courage to help my people, to defend my people in the wrong when I see one being done. 
during this area, uh, it might be a little strong for me to say, but we were held hostage in a system designed to destroy Aboriginal cultures and identity and to strip us control over our own destinies. destiny. What we lost back then, we are now gaining by directly shaping and influencing our system in our government. And in which studies conference such as this is going to be an instrument of production for Inuit in Nunavut to carry on their vision and their desire to run their own affairs so one day that they can run their own uh, territory with pride as to who they are without having to bow down to other uh, powers to be. We cannot undo the past, but the public acknowledgement of the attempts to eradicate pride in our culture gave us an opportunity to reflect on the work needed to heal personal wounds and to rebuild for the future. Now is the time to regain some of what was lost through the residential school system. It is my continued belief, it was well, strong belief that the authorities we have assumed from the government of Nuna will provide us with an opportunity to turn to a fresh page and begin a new chapter in our relationship, may they be within our families, our communities, or our country. Now the next step is that the government has adopted some legislation, in particular Inuit Language Protection Act, Inuit Official Language Act, and they have also adopted uh, the uh, policy guidelines through Inuit societal values. As I mentioned earlier, in, uh, when I was elected in 2004, our government, in its second mandate, uh, made a comment by the Premier Ukala then that it is time that we will use to build a stronger cultural foundation based on inner societal values and develop and expand our economy. Provided Inuit with the means to develop a vision for their future based on Inuit desire and aspiration. A future in which inner societal value will be used to find lasting solutions to the endemic social malay destroying of society. The vision mentioned can come about only if ISV is accorded a place in both cultural politics, order, and social control. It is valued for its importance to social well-being and also in itself as a cultural element. As well for the social benefit, it brings Nunavut mute at large. As inner societal values enters cultural politics, social expectations, it distinguishes inner culture from dominant society. Thus reinforcing for cultural appropriate approaches to Inuit governance. Moreover, it helps Nunavut communities regain and maintain their sense of pride and worth when their distinctiveness is enforced in a strong Inuit principle statement. While this may indicate how non Inuit are increasingly in support of the formerly colonized people political aspiration vis a vis the West, However, there appears to be some service department that are struggling to find ways to adjust desired outcome of Nunavut government as outlined in Penaswakta of 2004-2009. There appears to be a fundamental problem, one that has to do with government basic approach. In other words, one can argue 
Though there is a strong political statement to the acceptance of ISV, this not guarantee a prominent role simply because Inuit are governing themselves. It can be said that senior bureaucrats are to train professional people based on Western standards. Program delivery, particularly in the area of social services, will not be appropriate to Inuit as intended in Inuit IQ principle statements. In order to remedy this, some perceive a need to differentiate between Inuit participation in government and adequate incorporation of IV, ISV, Inuit societal value. But this conceptualization of ISV through the application of IQ in your Kauimani to Hangit is not intended to create certain abstract framework with an existence and justification independently the people it's supposed to serve. Rather, the goal is to involve those individuals, especially the elders, in the social life of Nunavut. Elders and parents had and could contribute counteracting the effects of social ills as a result of social as a result of rapid social change, disruption with colonization and providing cultural social cohesiveness. I also might add that we are now in the new era of decolonization. Decolonization, I think that's the right word. In our existing literature, ISV, I pointed out that family is the primary and fundamental vehicle for transmitting this body of knowledge and culture. It is within the family that values, beliefs, and social norms and expectations are transmitted. I must acknowledge to the fact that my good friend J.B.D. Angnakak has done a lot of work in this area, and he did give me an inspiration to look into this and to view this as an important aspect of Inuit development as they try to achieve self-determination for, for, for years well, for years that were coming around. During the, um, within, the, well, within the less formal, more personal form of social control of the Inuit, the conditions of natural and social life required a quick response to the nonconformity. As to the dangers that survival of all in small small community, small community, whether or not and what kind of response followed depended depended largely on a judgment of specific situation by those involved. The personalities involved, the gravity, and the particular circumstances of the case guided the responses. In which also structure were very strong. People knew their roles and expectation of others. The children knew their parents, and the parents knew their children. In our discussion, it was made clear that sanctioning mechanism is a part of a social constraint to self-constraint. These mechanisms serve to correct the individual who violate existing norms and thus, thus add to the pressure exerted on people to comply with these norms. The nature of these sanctioning mechanisms differs from traditional Inuit society and that of institutionalized formal sanctioning mechanisms that have been imposed by dominant society. In other words, the method used to reach this purpose differed. The important principle, justice through punishment, found in the legal system was never an aspect of inner social, social con control, as I mentioned earlier. As it is, it is seen that this method of social control is based on threats. If you do not behave, you will be punished rather than neutral or objective. In which social control is personal or subjective. The involvement of parents, elders, based on their personal characteristics, also reveal the subjective nature of Inuit social control. 
as opposed to more objective form of Western social legal control. This leads me to believe that individuals or group of individuals within the current existing bureaucratic hierarchical model in the social formation attempt to monopolize these aspects and thus use them as a source of power and status differentials or a means of domination and exploitation. On the other hand, in response to non-conforming person aim at resocialization point, pointing out the adverse consequences of their non-social behavior on others by providing an example of proper behavior through nagligusungnak, displaying show, showing care for others. Therefore, maintaining social peace and order, including moral standards, is a collective responsibility. Any acceptable behavior had the potential for a negative impacting of many individuals. Through a counseling process involving elder or elders, people try to change one's, one's non-social behavior, lacking more thoroughgoing means, showing cares and pointing out the consequences of wrong, and simply asking where the means to this end. However, for those who did not be, for who, who did misbehave, had to be dealt with quickly and effectively. However, despite this direct or indirect participation of entire figuration, the outcome or success of these forms of social control ultimately depended on readiness of people to change their behavior for no one had the final say. Next step, oh, before, before I go on to the next step, on the uh, inner societal value and social programs, uh, as a discussion, as a discourse, there was a little evidence uh, by, by the government back in 2004 that Department of Health Social Service, particular social service, had made very little, if any, attempts to find ways to incorporate in societal values, their policies and programs, even with their departmental IQ coordinator. This is sad because but at that particular time, the government couldn't, really couldn't understand how IQ coordinators would work within their department. It appears that they were resisting, and it seems, as an incursion from the intercultural. The majority of none of mean are Inuit. They're trying to apply, apply their Inuit societal values, but their societal values are seen to be an incursion to the status quo. Doesn't that raise a question as to who really, we really are? what Nunavut is all about, what Lankhams is all about. There need to be a lot more work to be done. We have to train our own people so they can take on a leadership and administration of these policies and programs within the government. If we are to depend on the Southern trained professionals to do this for us, we are only dreaming. It will, be, it will take time. We'll have to train our own people, our own uh, government employees as they advance and train to take on the directorship of these departments, then we can start seeing some changes. Before that can happen, there still needs to be work done. The balance of power is the question that needs to be addressed within these formulations of policies and guidelines. Some commentators on social and legal anthropologists have expressed that balance of power are always present whenever there is a functional interdependence between people. Power is structural characteristic of a human relationship, of all human relationships. The power balances that exist in society varies with, 
Uh, various changes in the existing balance of power in a major, is a major cost for church social change. In the case of Inuit from Nunavut, this has seen some, this has seen devastating effect on our social life among the Inuit, who had made Nunavut their home for generations before their colonization by Westerners. Power is the elusive concept but it seems reasonable to argue that there is irregularity, that the relationship and what power in it have is mostly of highly symbolic character. To put simply, there are individual group of individuals with more chances to exercise power than others. And I also like to add that when I was 18 years old, I was elected as the chairman of the community council because I could speak English. I didn't have a pound or an ounce of our elders' wisdom that were sitting in the same room. Shameful, isn't it? Shameful. So, in this particular, it is mentioned that a lot, a lot of work will have to be done. The challenge is for us to work together past departmental and organizational walls, and develop those supports, mechanism to prevent non-conforming acts, promote healthy living and embrace life through education, cultural relevant programs, appropriate services. We need to question, what is it that works and does not work? What makes it effective and ineffective? What structures do we put in place? What do we take down? The other perspective to think from is identity, how our underutilized existing valuable resources, being our elders, regain their pivotal role in community social control. We have attempted to point out areas of serious concerns in our uh, current social problems in Nunavut from inner societal value perspective. So finally, uh, and we, ha you know, I have made an attempt to help, particularly those that want to seek some, well, to open some discourse on inner societal values and to draw attention to the powers be, be, be it the minister or the deputy ministers in the government. And they, we do have work cut out for us in that area. And I'm also glad, happy to say that a lot of work has been done through good work like Naulok, uh, Nakok, and others in the government departments, um, deputy ministers, uh, Kathy Pick for one. You know, there are uh, a lot of people that are truly uh, value in a societal values. With that, um, I must admit the fact that I couldn't open my file. I, was t I took my grandson's uh, laptop, it didn't work on my file, but nevertheless, as I promised, I'd make some presentation, I did my best with what I have with you today. Korean Nui.